So now suppose that the space X is T2 or Hausdorff. And let the points X and Y be points in the space Y such that X is not equal to Y. Then, since the function F is a bijection, the inverse of X and the inverse of Y are points in the space X such that the inverse of X is not equal to the inverse of Y. So as the space X is Hausdorff, there exist open neighborhoods. U of the inverse of X and V of the inverse of Y such that the intersection of U and V is empty. Now, since the inverse of the function F is continuous, the direct image of U and the direct image of V are open sets in the space Y such that the intersection of the direct image of U with the direct image of V is the direct image of the intersection of U and V which is the direct image of the empty set which is the empty set. Now as the inverse of the point X is in the set U, the direct image of the inverse of X, which since the function F is a bijection, is the point X, is in the direct image of the set U. And similarly, The direct image of the inverse of the point Y is the point Y, and this point is in the direct image of the set V. That is, the direct image of U and the direct image of V are open neighborhoods. of the points X and Y respectively. Such that the intersection of these neighborhoods is empty. And hence the space Y is T2 or Hausdorff. So now suppose that the space X is T1 or Frechet. And once again, let the points X and Y be points in the space Y, such that X is not equal to Y. Then, since the function F is a bijection, the inverse of X and the inverse of Y are points in the space X, such that the inverse of X is not equal to the inverse of Y. Now as 
the space X is T1 or for Shea. There exist open neighborhoods. U of the inverse of X and V of the inverse of Y such that the inverse of X is not in the set V and the inverse of Y is not in the set U. Now since the function f inverse is a continuous bijection, the direct image of u and the direct image of v are open neighborhoods. of the points X and Y respectively. Such that the point X is not in the direct image of V and the point Y is not in the direct image of U. And hence the space Y is T1 or Freshe. So now suppose that the space X is T0 or Komolgorov and let the points X and Y be points in the space Y such that X is not equal to Y. Then since the function F is a bijection the inverse of X and the inverse of Y are points in the space X such that the inverse of X is not equal to the inverse of Y. So as the space X is Komogorov, there exist open neighborhoods U of the inverse of X and V of the inverse of Y such that either the inverse of X is not in the set V or the inverse of Y is not in the set U. Now since the function F inverse is a continuous bijection the direct image of U and the direct image of V are open neighborhoods of the points X and Y respectively. Now 
if the inverse of x is not in the set V, then the direct image of the inverse of x, which since the function f is a bijection, is the point x, is not in the direct image of the set v. And if the inverse of y is not in the set u, then the direct image of the inverse of y which is the point y is not in the direct image of u. In either case, there exist open neighborhoods f of u of the point x and f of v of the point y such that either the point x is not in the direct image of v or the point y is not in the direct image of u and hence the space y is t0 or Komolgorov. And so the separation condition satisfied by a given space is a topological invariant. So let's summarize the topological invariants. That we have demonstrated in this lecture. The cardinality. of the underlying set and the topology our topological invariants the number of isolated points as a topological invariant Connectedness is a topological invariant. Compactness is a topological invariant. The countability condition satisfied by a space is a topological invariant and the separation condition or conditions is a topological invariant. Now, in order to prove that a space X is homeomorphic to a space Y, we must demonstrate that there exists a homeomorphism which we'll call F, mapping X into Y. So as an exercise, consider the open interval from negative one to one as a subspace of the real line show that the function f mapping the real line into the 
open interval from negative 1 to 1, defined by f of x is the hyperbolic tangent of x is a homeomorphism. Now, in order to prove that a space X is not homeomorphic to a space Y, it suffices to find a single topological property that is not shared by both X and Y so for example consider the rationals and the reals Since the rationals is countably infinite and the reals is uncountable, the space of rationals with the topology tau is not homeomorphic to the space of reals with the topology mu, regardless of the specific topologies tau and mu now let the set X have more than two elements let tau sub e be the excluded point topology and let tau sub p be the particular point topology then since the space X with the excluded point topology has the cardinality of X minus one isolated points, and the space X with the particular point topology has one isolated point, The space X with the excluded point topology is not homeomorphic to the space X with the particular point topology. Okay, so we'll end here for today. Next time we'll look at some additional topologies on the reals and we will continue to determine whether spaces are homeomorphic. So I hope you have enjoyed the 21st lecture. Thanks for watching.